I just read this story. The story is, uh, is in, I bought a book from Rav Galinsky, about Rav Yaakov Galinsky, and in there it's one of the mice that he tells over about the Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim, the Chavetz Chaim, was quite poor, as were many, many people, always. But the Chavetz Chaim was married, and what happened after they got married? After they got married, he went to go learn. He went to go learn in the base Medrash. And his wife, how would they have food? She would go to the bakery, to the local bakery, and at the end of the day, when there was, you know, everyone was done, there was a little crumbs left over, she would buy the crumbs for pennies. She would then take those crumbs, those crusts, and she would soak them, and then she would make them into some sort of pancakes. That's what she would do. One day, Chavetz Chaim came home, and he sees his wife crying. So he says, what's wrong? So, of course, what happens when you ask someone what's wrong when they're crying? They cry more, which is just, it does, okay, but what's, what's wrong? She cries more, right? So he goes and says, no, tell me what's wrong. She cries more. What's the problem? We don't have any food. We don't have any, we don't have any food. I went to, to go ahead and I didn't have any pennies, any money, so I've been buying on credit. Like I've been buying the, for the past couple of days. I had nothing, so he's letting me buy on credit. But I ran out of credit. He's not even giving me any credit anymore. So I wasn't able to get anything, so we don't have any food. We don't have any food. Try to put yourself in this circumstance. Try to put yourself in a place. And again, all the teams, we discussed this at length. I'm not going to go so in-depth, but a little bit. And has anyone here, let's put it this way, it's probably us too, but anyone here ever had a kid that said they're hungry? Yes or no? <laughs> Guys, this is not a hard question. Have you ever had a kid that said they're hungry? Yes? yes? Okay. Right? It's like, do you want me to answer? Yeah, it's a real question. Have you ever had a kid that's hungry? Yes or no? Okay, you had a kid that's hungry. And you're like, you're like, okay, so there's food in the pantry, there's food in the fridge, or whatever it is, yeah? And then they come afterwards and they say, there's nothing to eat. There you go, right? There's nothing to eat. It was only the women that spoke up. The men are like, yeah, there is nothing to eat. Right? Okay, but, but you, you get the idea, right? There's nothing to eat. So really, there's nothing to, really nothing you go ahead and you say, what are you eating? I mean, one of my kids, I remember, they said they're hungry. I'm like, so make a sandwich. And my kid was, I can't say it. It's one they go like, oh, a sandwich. I don't want a sandwich. I'm like, why? What's the problem with a sandwich? You want me to make it for? What's the problem? It's a sandwich. They go, no, because if I have a sandwich, I have to bench. <laughs> Washing's not the problem. Benching is. The kid was around seven or eight at the time. It's, excuse me. You're not allowed to hate benching till 14. What is going on over here, right? I'm not allowed to bench, right? They say, there's nothing to eat. There's plenty to eat, but there's nothing that you want to eat. There are some people, Rechman al-Litzlan, we should never know. What does Rechman al-Litzlan mean? Okay, how many were in my shear the other day when I asked this question? Okay, good. So we got some of you. We got to practice this. Rachman al no one should know what this is. And if anyone does, you do. And if you don't, you don't. But many of us don't understand what it means to have nothing. What does it mean nothing? Chavetz Chaim's wife said, we have nothing. The delicacy, the snack, the vegetable, the everything, the protein was this little put together crumbs soaked in something, and that's all that it was. That's all they had. And they don't have that anymore. It's nothing. I want you to put yourself in such a circumstance and think about that. Think about coming back and you have nothing. You didn't eat the whole day. You're ready for your meal. You didn't eat the whole day. You didn't eat the whole day. Not like I ate, but it wasn't so good. You didn't eat the whole day. What did you eat today? Nothing. Really? Nothing? Whatever, I had like uh, an apple and like a, a chocolate sandwich and like, you know, cookies, but it was like nothing. I'm starving. You're not starving. You're spoiled, right? So what, what does it mean? Nothing. You come home. Try to put yourself in that place. Now for every man, <laughs> of course, we all expect to walk in and everything's going to be ready. <laughs> Good to go. <laughs> anyway, so you walk in and there's nothing there. And your wife is crying. And you say, what's the problem? There's no food. The bakery guy, the baker, he's not extending credit. What would your reaction be? Be real. Be real with me. What would your reaction be? This is a question. Mark, uh, begin the answers. It's your turn. What would it be? Devastation. What? Devastation. Devastation. After that. Kill the baker. Kill the baker. Now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Could you please get the camera on this guy right here? Okay. Yeah. 
Don't worry about it. He's uh, wearing a checkered shirt in the front row. Let's move, 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 move. Okay, so what would your reaction be? Right? Kill the baker. Would anyone here think of going to talk to the baker? Yes or no? Anybody? Do we have to do it the other way? If you would think of talking to the baker, stare at me blankly. Good. So you would all think of going to talk to the baker, right? All right. As you don't have a different answer. If you don't have a different answer, that means you're agreeing with that answer. Different answer? What? <laughs> Stop it. Okay, so what we do? It's a gamzula tova, right? What? Say again? Piker cholim. Okay, call someone up. Yeah? What does the Chavetz Chaim do? Chavetz Chaim claps on the table and goes like that. I lifted it up so I shouldn't do one of those things. You know, I know what it's like. You know, so uh, as you're listening to, Chavetz Chaim goes like, Satan, 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 Satan. I'm not letting you take me away from my learning. If I have to starve, I'll starve. So be it. And he went back to the base medrash. The next day he died. Uh, anyway, so. No, what happened the next day? The next day, the next day, he came home, and guess what? His wife was making pancakes. She had the food, the stuff, and she was making it. What happened? She goes, I don't know. Suddenly, what happened? The Satan saw that he's not working, and he has no rishus just to let my husband starve. So he had no choice but to let the person go ahead and give me the food back. The insight the Chavetz Chaim had at the moment of intense Hunger, his wife's pain, and there's, it's a bad time. It's not the bigger. That's it. It's, Rebona Shalom, not letting the Satan do this. I know what's behind this. I understand. This is only the Rebona Shalom testing me. This is the Rebona Shalom testing me through the Satan, and I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to win. And he goes ahead and he wins. Do we recognize in every single circumstance that we're in? Who's behind it? You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.